The beginning of a new year can be a hectic time, and because free time is already in short supply these days, I wanted to share with you a quick and easy four-part routine that you can do on the go that'll help you to maintain the health and mobility of your spine, rib cage, hips, and pelvis. Let's get into this. For all the movements in this series, we're going to be using a walking stick. Now, if you don't have one of those available, a mop or a broom handle works perfectly well. Now, movement number one is a spinal twist, and for this, you're going to grasp your stick with an overhand grip out in front of you, just like this. You're then going to place it behind your neck, resting on your shoulders, just like that. Notice how wide my grip is here. You're then going to assume a split stance where one foot will come out in front of you, the other will go behind you. Notice that my left foot, the one that's out in front, is resting flat on the ground, while my rear foot, the heel comes up and I'm up on the ball of the foot. And from here, you're going to slowly twist in the direction of the foot that's forward. So in this case, left foot is forward. I'm going to be slowly rotating my spine to the left. Now, importantly, you should be drawing your belly button into your spine the entire time you're performing the twist. Rotating across while drawing that belly button in and maintaining a nice, long, upright posture. Head is reaching to the ceiling and just rhythmically twisting in the direction of that front hip. You're gonna get a nice stretch across the front of the rear hip, the back of the front hip. You're also gonna get pelvic mobilization and of course, the lower back. Now, as you get more comfortable with this motion, you can add this one extra dimension that you see me doing here, which is dipping deeper into the lunge as you come down and then raising up as you come out of it. So dipping down and return, dipping down and return. 10 to 15 repetitions, switch over to the opposite side, right foot flat on the ground, left foot up on the ball, rotating in the direction of the foot that's forward, drawing that belly button into the spine and just rhythmically rotating through the range of motion that you are comfortable with. Dipping deeper into it will increase the stretch through the hips and pelvis. 10 to 15 repetitions and you're ready to move on to movement number two, which is reaching back. Now, for this one, you're gonna grasp your stick behind you with a reverse grip. So you'll notice that my knuckles are facing away from me here. The grip is about shoulder width apart. You're gonna push your elbow straight back behind you, keep the spine nice and long, reach your head for the ceiling, and then slowly and steadily push that stick back behind you as far as you can go. Slowly return and pushing back. This movement gives you a great stretch across the front of the shoulder and through the lower portion of the rib cage. Really rings out those lower ribs to allow you to fully inflate your lungs. Rib cage mobilization is massively neglected and when it stays neglected for too long, it really impacts your ability to breathe and oxygenate your tissues. 15 to 20 repetitions there, and you're ready for movement number three, which is a shoulder roll. For this one, you're gonna take an overhand grip as wide on the stick as you possibly can. You're gonna draw the belly in, nice tall posture, and you're gonna do shoulder rolls where you're bringing that stick all the way back behind you. So imagine that there's like a table here at 90 degrees, and you're going from 90 in front to 90 behind slow and steady. Now the trick on this one is that if you don't have the shoulder mobility to allow for this freedom of motion, you just grab wider on the stick. So I've taken people who are incredibly limited and incredibly stiff in their shoulders and you give them a very long stick with a very wide grip and they can perform this motion. You see their eyes light up because they didn't expect themselves to be able to do it. So 15 to 20 repetitions here, slow and steady, keeping that nice tall spine, reaching your head for the ceiling, mobilizing that thoracic spine into extension, the entire shoulder girdle, fantastic motion here. 
Movement number four is by far the most challenging of this series, but it also yields the most benefit by mobilizing almost every joint in your body at the exact same time. The movement that I'm talking about here is an overhead squat. You're gonna take that same overhand grip on the stick. You're gonna push it straight up over your head. It should be in line with your spine. And you're then going to push the stick to the ceiling. See my shoulder blades raise up here. You're gonna maintain that upward push Again, drawing the belly button in to your spine. You're gonna take a hip width stance, point your feet outward about five or 10 degrees, just a very slight outward turn of the foot. And then you're gonna drop down into a squat, maintaining spinal extension the entire time. Notice at the bottom, the line of my spine and the line of my shins run parallel to each other. As you get warmed up on this, you should be able to go just a little deeper into the motion, which is something that you should experience on all of these movements. And then notice one other thing here, that the stick stays perpendicular to the floor the entire time. So the deeper I go into the squat, the more the stick will actually roll back behind me. 10 to 15 repetitions, and you have warmed up almost your entire body in just a few minutes and you're ready to take on the day. One thing that's important to note on that overhead squat is it is a challenging motion, but don't let that scare you off because it's also an incredibly safe motion for you to ease yourself into. And you do that by simply limiting the range of motion or how deep you go when you squat. And so when people are first starting out with this movement, one thing that I recommend is having a stable surface behind you that your rear end can come into contact with as you squat down. Now, it lets you know how deep you're going, and importantly, it can catch you if you start to lose your balance. So here I'm using a storage container, but you can imagine if it was a foot higher, it would really limit my range of motion on the squat, making the movement super, super safe. And so here, what I'm gonna do is take that same overhand grip, feet are hip width apart, toes turned outward very slightly, reach the arms up overhead, push way up, and then draw that belly button in and squat down to the surface and return. Squat down to the surface, oh no, I start to lose my balance? No problem, I can just sit down on the surface. So that's a great way to ease yourself in. If you start off super high, as you get more comfortable with the motion, you can just work to decrease the height of the surface that you're using. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and click that red subscribe button underneath the video player below. This way you'll receive updates every time a new video comes out. That's all for this week. I wanna wish you the happiest of new years and I'll see you next time.